Welcome to the Texas Instruments Trace webinar. I am Arti Goyle and with me I have Rafael Souza. Today we will be discussing the different trace options and the trace interface available in Code Composer Studio. For those of you new to TI embedded software and tools ecosystem, this is an area where TI has invested heavily over the years. The ecosystem is comprised of runtime software, including real-time operating systems like TI RTOS, embedded Linux, and a multitude of software packages. There are development tools, including Code Composer Studio Integrated Development Environment, JTAG emulators, and development boards such as launchpads and evaluation modules. On top of this, there's a rich community providing expertise, turnkey solutions, product support, and training. Trace is very useful to perform advanced debugging on embedded systems, as it expands the basic JTAG debugging by performing real-time data gathering of several aspects of the embedded processor. In its most traditional form, Trace captures and stores all the instructions executed by the CPU in real-time, thus allowing users to find complex or intermittent bugs in the system. This is called core or instruction trace. Certain TI embedded processors can also capture system events in real time, such as memory interface throughput and power domain status, thus allowing users to find system-wide problems during runtime. This is called system trace. There are multiple scenarios where trace can help to debug problems in the system. For example, the ability of core trace to see the entire past execution history allows finding places where the code behaves erratically or took an unexpected branch. Also, if the system is running slow or is returning incorrect or corrupt data, it is possible to use a combination of core and system trace to track down what may be happening. In certain devices, it is also possible to evaluate if the cores are actually powered down and not hung waiting for interrupts or other events. Irrespective of the scenario, trace is typically used as the last line of defense during the debug process. The main reason is the amount of information gathered by it, especially instruction trace, which requires a thorough analysis process. The other reason is the data collected is unaware of the context of a higher level kernel or operating system. Expanding on the concept of core trace, the idea behind it is pretty straightforward. Simply capture all the assembly instructions that ever get executed by the CPU and send them to the host PC for analysis. These are stored together with timestamps. Once this data is available, CCS can correlate the assembly instructions with the source code and thus allow looking at the code execution more easily. In addition to that, it can also perform a multitude of other operations. The most relevant are code coverage analysis, which means finding out which routines were actually executed, and profiling, which means knowing how many times and for how long each instruction and routine executed. However, one important detail defines its availability. Since the execution speed of modern processors can reach billions of instructions per second, it is impossible to gather all this information without special hardware and some buffering between the device and the host PC. That is the reason why core trace is not available in all devices. And for the ones that have this feature, there are two implementations with different levels of complexity. Embedded trace buffer or ETB and pin trace using an external emulator pod. As shown in the previous slide, core trace can be done either via the embedded trace buffer or using external pins and a trace pod. Embedded trace buffer or ETB is a small memory area that is tightly coupled to the processing core of the device and contains a copy of all the instructions executed by it. Being small, this memory is able to capture a smaller sample of instructions that pass through the core and it only operates in circular mode which means that the old instructions are overridden by newer ones. However, the biggest advantage is that it allows performing trace with no need to add hardware to the board, 
and any XDS emulator can be used. Pin trace is a technology that features a trace buffer outside of the device. The trace buffer can be much larger in size and allows additional configurability such as operation in both circular and one-shot mode. The one-shot mode allows retrieving the exact history of execution up to a given point of interest. However, the fact that the trace buffer is outside the device adds the requirement of having a high-speed communications interface to capture all the data, thus requiring additional hardware and limiting the choice of XDS emulator to just one, which is the XDS 560 V2 Pro Trace. Moving on to System Trace, think of it as a type of trace that monitors the entire device and not only the core processor. In other words, it monitors the core processor status, internal buses on the device, and peripherals via special modules called CP tracers. Therefore, this trace does not capture instructions, but event messages, such as memory accesses, power status, and so on. And similar to core trace, it sends them to the host PC where they can be visualized and analyzed using advanced visualization tools. For comparison with core trace, system trace messages do not occur with the same frequency as instructions. Therefore, its implementation is much less complex, although they still require some hardware buffering. System trace is not available on all devices, and similar to core trace, for the ones who have this feature, there are two implementations with different levels of complexity, embedded trace buffer or ETB, and STM pin trace using an external emulator pod. As shown in the previous slide, System trace can be done either via the ETB or using external pins and an XDS 560 V2 STM. All the different system components of a device communicate to the STM module via the CP tracer modules, which either store the information in the internal ETB buffer or send it to the external pins to be stored in the STM buffer of the XDS 560 V2. When using ETB, the same details mentioned earlier apply here as well. A smaller sample of system messages operates only in circular mode and no hardware changes are necessary, so can be used with any XDS emulator. On the other hand, the STM buffer can have any size and allows additional configurability such as operation in both circular and one-shot mode. The additional hardware usually does not involve a major redesign and can be optional in several cases, although some devices do not support STM with the common 14-pin JTAG connector. Lastly, the fact that the trace buffer is outside the device requires the use of an emulator equipped with an STM buffer and decoder, and one of two models can be chosen, an XDS 560 V2 STM or an XDS 560 V2 Pro Trace. This table summarizes the trace features available per emulator family. In summary, the XTS 560 V2 Pro Trace is able to perform any type of trace. The XTS 560 V2 only lacks core pin trace, and all other emulators can do trace only if the device has an ETB. This table shows the features available per device. In summary, all devices that have a C6400, a C6600, or an ARM core have some type of trace, although only the C6000 devices support core trace with external pins. Also, all devices that have an ARM core also have ETB, which automatically allows performing code trace using ETB, but only the most modern ones are also capable of performing system trace. So, how would you set up and use Trace from CCS? Starting with CCS version 5.4, the Trace setup procedure is very straightforward and allows performing the most common tasks using simple menu selections. The features are easily accessible through the menu Tools Hardware Trace Analyzer, and several default trace jobs are available depending on the hardware capabilities of both the emulator and the device. 
Also, it is possible to access advanced settings to completely customize the trace collection. Additional details will be shown during the demonstration. Also starting with CCS version 5.4, the tools to perform analysis and graphical visualization of the trace data are greatly improved with several dedicated functions for profiling, throughput analysis, code coverage, and others. These advanced visualization tools are automatically opened when a specific trace job is selected. Additional details will be shown during the demonstration. One last aspect that can be very useful to debug systems is to embed the trace capabilities in the system's firmware, which is possible with a library suite called ctools.lib. These libraries feature APIs for all the components of trace, like SDM and ETB, as well as advanced debugging capabilities called Advanced Event Triggering, or AET. Embedding such advanced debugging capabilities in the system's firmware allows implementing self-monitoring and remote debugging functionality to it. An example is a product that is deployed in remote places. More details about these libraries can be found at the links shown here. Now that we have covered a basic introduction to Trace, I'm going to hand it over to Rafael, who's going to do a brief demonstration on how to use Core and System Trace. Thank you, Arti. For the demonstration today, I will show an example of Core Trace using an XDS560 Pro Trace on a 66678 EVM board. I will show how easy it is to set up and visualize the execution data, as well as extract relevant information about the running system. The setup is comprised of the XDS560 V2 Pro Trace emulator connected to the VMC6678 via the 60-pin JTAG connector. The board is running the image processing demonstration code of the multi-core SDK package. For the sake of time, CCS debug session is already connected and the code is loaded to all the cores of the C6678 device. I have the code running on all the cores and will trace core 0, as it is the master. The most common trace jobs can be enabled in a very straightforward way. Simply go to Menu Tools and select Hardware Trace Analyzer. It gives several options that are dependent on the capabilities of both the emulator and the target board connected. We're going to select PC Trace which shows execution instruction by instruction. From this screen, you can select the settings for the device, uh, actually the type of receiver you want, either ETB or uh, pin trace, pro trace. And if using pin trace, several settings can be configured, such as buffer size, mode, and the number of pins used to transfer data out of the device. We're gonna select the maximum number of pins, uh, we we'll add uh, a little bit more buffer size and run circular mode so we can actually take a look at how the uh, the data is shown. By default, PC Trace will collect all instructions until the target is halted or is manually stopped. In this case, I'll set a specific function where I want to stop the data collection. I'll end at the specific function in my uh, code. And we start. The trace pod establishes the communication and opens the trace viewer in a few seconds. At this point, let's put the processing algorithm to run. The trace collection will stop at the function specified before. You can see in the back it's stopped by user. The trace stopped and CCS is still processing the data, the incoming data. As you can, you can recall, the buffer size was about one megabyte, but you see that it's displaying a lot more records because this data is heavily compressed. So if we scroll down to the end of my buffer, we'll see 
my function as I select it as a stop point for the data collection. We can also do something very interesting, which is to navigate to the source code. You can see here the function is the same as was displayed in my trace structure. That's the call to the function before, so you can really navigate the source code step by step. Once this data is collected, CCS contains several data analysis tools, such as an execution graph display, which gives an idea about the code execution flow and various profiling tools. Let's take a look at the execution flow. CCS is currently processing the collected trace data to properly display it in a graph. You can notice the number of records is a lot smaller as this graph captures the function's entry and exit points instead of every single execution instruction. This usually takes a few seconds to finish processing. It finished, so you can see all the functions that are executed are color coded, and then you can expand this so you can have a list of the functions by name. In this case, in the x axis, we have also a snapshot in number of cycles of the system. Let's zoom out so you can get the entire execution. Also, at the very bottom, it's actually the function that called my, our stop point, which is the name of the function was process RGB that called the convert RGB to Y as we specified then. Let's zoom at the last, last very few cycles a bit. Zooming into the latest moments, it highlights the function running time. Many other analysis tools and functions are available in CCS, therefore feel free to take a look at the resources and training material. That concludes the demonstration. I hope this webinar gave you a good insight about the trace features and capabilities. Arti and I thank you for your time today and hope to see you in our next webinar.